Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome to the channel Bookables. Today I am here to film my July wrap up, all of the books I read in the month of July. And it was a lot. I've read 10 books this month, which is the most I've read, dare I say, the entire year. So round of applause to me. Like I never thought I would do that anymore. Like my standard was pretty much seven to eight and I thought I would fit into that. But this month, I guess I just had a phenomenal month and I'm not mad about that at all. So since I had such a great month, let me confirm with my notebook here. I read primarily from three different genres. So instead of doing my usual where I start with my least favorite working up to my favorite, I'm going to do that with each different genre I read. Starting with the one I read the most, which was thriller. I read five thrillers for the month of July and I read some I loved and I read some that I did not like. So let's get into it. First up being, oh gosh. A Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing. I know, I know, I know. I really wanted to love this. I love her other books. Did not love this one at all. I gave it a two and a half out of five. It hurts my heart a lot. This is about Wes and Ivy who are the definition of a toxic couple. They should not be together. At the beginning of the book, they're broken up, but they decide, hey, let's get back together. Much to everyone's like utter annoyance because they know that they're horrible together, so why would they do it? And there's a mystery lurking on the back of why they broke up the last time. There's also a couple other characters. And honestly, I'm just going to be frank with you here. It was boring. There wasn't a lot of thrilling aspects to it. I could care less about Wes and Ivy. They were both horrible people and I guess they deserve each other. I don't know. I didn't like it and I'm very sad about it because I do love her writing but this one just wasn't it for me sadly. So moving on. Up, I have the new Sherry LaPena book, Everyone Here is Lying. I enjoy Sherry LaPena books. She writes a lot of suburban thrillers, domestic thrillers. I never know what to call them and they're just kind of a good palette cleanser for me. I haven't really loved one of hers. This one is another one that was just, it was okay. I gave it a three out of five. Was it anything memorable? No. This is about a character, a whole bunch of characters actually. It's about this one safe neighborhood and basically um, a girl goes missing and it starts off the book with William who is a man that is married and has two kids and he's having an affair. <laughs> and um, it, um, and his affair, this is not spoiling anything, it's all in the book jacket, his affair lady decides to end to end it and he's pissed quite frankly. So he goes home, sees his nine-year-old daughter and they get in an argument and what do you know? She disappears. Nobody knows where she is. So everyone thinks every, you know, everyone has different suspicions of if somebody took her, did she run away? And it kind of goes from there how you can really never tell if somebody is lying. And it just, every character was not the best. I just, I, uh, I don't, I don't. Like, I just don't know. Like, the father in this was horrible. The kid was horrible. Like, I just, mm, it definitely made me feel icky, but I think that was the intention of how all these characters were just hiding things and they were all, quite frankly, looking out for themselves and not for, like, the greater good, if you will. I gave it a three out of five. It was okay. Next up is Dead Eleven by Jimmy and Julio. Look at this cover, so beautiful. This is about an island that's obsessed with the year 1994. A woman named Willow goes missing and her brother decides to go after her and look for her parents. It's a mixed media book and it's told from the perspective of a whole bunch of things. He starts out the book and he kind of pieces together. You get Willow's point of view and things like that. You get to figure out why this island is obsessed with 1994 and it's creepy and it's fun. The ending is not the best, but I still enjoyed it. It was a fun one. I love the fact that it was mixed media. So is it worth all the hype that's been going around with it? I want to say yes, because I love the cover so much. It was pretty good. If you just want a book that's creepy island stuff, I would say yes. Is it insanely creepy? No, but it was interesting. I gave it a four out of five. And I have None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell, her newest one. I have a wishy-washy relationship with Lisa Jewell, kind of like Sherry LaPena. This is about a character, two characters actually, um, Alex and Josie. They meet at a restaurant. They learn their it's both their birthdays. They both turn 45. They both were born in the hospital. And there Josie becomes quite obsessed with Alex. She learns that Alex has a podcast where she interviews other women. So Josie's like, I'm going to become the the center of this podcast and she quickly envelopes herself into Joe's she quickly envelopes herself into Alex's life and it's just it's kind of horrible from there each person's horrible and basically it says like just as soon as Josie enters Alex's life she leaves and what do you know Alex's podcast that's supposed to be about other women ends up being about herself because lots of 
dark things happen. And I really like this one. I love the podcast element. I love the characters. They were both had a lot of not good things about them, but you felt for them. And a lot of times you would be like, wait, should I be feeling this? It was really good. Probably one of my favorite Lisa Jewel books I've read. I gave it a four out of five. And the last thriller that I read that was definitely my favorite is the last one by Will Dean. This is about a woman who starts off um, going on a cruise with her boyfriend. They have a great day on their first day at seas and then they go to bed and she wakes up and she is alone on the cruise ship. By like that I mean there is literally no one else on board and she is freaking out man. And that's all I'm going to tell you about this book because it is a book that's meant to go into without knowing a lot because it has so many twists and turns that you cannot keep up with and I was not expecting any of them. It was fun. It was addicting. They can make this into a movie. I loved it. Great, great summertime thriller. Five out of five. Moving on to romance. I read three romance books this month. I would say we're kind of in the middle of the road for me. First one being The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. Sarah Adams just writes kind of clean romances that are cute. This is about two characters named Brie and Nathan and they have been best friends forever. Basically they decide to fake date um, and he's a professional football player. She's a ballerina like she owns a studio and they... <laughs> They both like have to fake date. They're both like, I don't have feelings for each other. While they are both so hopelessly in love with the other, how they don't see it, I have no freaking clue. But it was cute. Was it amazing? No. But if you want a good, clean palette cleanser, I'd recommend honestly any Sarah Adams book. Then we have Hello Stranger by Katherine Center. I have read a lot of her books. Please forgive me. I forgot the character's name in this one. She is an artist and She's not doing well financially. She gets accepted into this really big competition that she thinks will help blow up her, um, you know, art career because she's a portrait artist. And then she gets into an accident and she learns that she had a seizure and basically she has to have surgery and it causes her to have this condition let me try to pronounce this, prosopagnasia, hopefully I said that right, where basically when she looks at somebody's face, she just kind of sees just a mixture, like she cannot put the face together, she might know your voice, but she cannot figure out who you are. It is a real condition and basically her surgery causes. They don't know if it's going to be permanent or if it's just going to be kind of a phase until maybe her brain kind of starts wiring itself to where she can like it can recognize faces again. It's very, you know, it's it's quite insane how people live with it and they do and it's phenomenal. So she is like, crap, like, you know, I'm a portrait artist. Like, how am I gonna go in this competition? So she has to really learn about how to take people not at face value because she can't really even see that, but learning about herself, about that, maybe she has this relationship going on. It was cute. It wasn't my favorite Catherine Center book. I gave it a three and a half. I wanted kind of more from it. I'll say that. And then the last romance book I read is Grayson's Vow by Mia Sheridan, my first Mia Sheridan book. And it was cute. I didn't I feel like the writing's a little bit too simplistic for me, but I will be reading more of her books because I like the overall plot of this one. About a character named Kira who is really struggling financially. She has an abusive father and she has this trust that she can get, but only if she gets married. So she decides to she knows this guy named Grayson who got out of prison for like wrong reasons, if you will. And she's like, look, let's get married. You have a vineyard that's really struggling. I need some money. We'll split it. We'll just, you know, get married and then walk away in a year. And so he's like, you know what? I really don't want to do this, but I really need the money to help my vineyard. You really need the money to get away from your father. And so they do. And of course, you know, feelings will not happen at all, right? Right. <laughs> It was cute. It was steamy. Very steamy. I gave it a three and a half out of five. I'll definitely read more of her books. I don't know which ones to start with next. I have a few of them. Please let me know. It was it was pretty good. Last genre I have is fantasy and I read two fantasy both of them in the same series. One of them is my favorite. The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadband. I love this one. If you want a good vampire time, read this one. It's an indie one and I really loved it. I think the writing was really good. The characters were really good. I was very much invested. Like I stayed up to like 1 a.m. to finish this. And let me tell you, I don't do that often because I cherish my sleep because I get, I don't get a lot of them. I've got two kids and one of them does not sleep well. You get it. If you get it, you get it. So 
the fact that it kept me up to one gets a five star for me automatically. This is about a character named Oriya, who is a human living in very much a vampire world. The vampire king saved her when he when she was younger, and he's kind of raised her and trained her to enter this very brutal and lethal competition called the Kajari. And basically, in that, it's like a battle of the death. There's trials each, like different moons, if you will, because they go by that. And whoever's the last one standing who wins gets a gift from the goddess of death herself and so oriah really wants to win this and so she's pitted with a bunch of vampires she has to form alliances with one vampire she does not trust maybe steam happens it does but i loved it it was great highly recommended i could not get enough of it i love the character how she wasn't she was an underdog yes but this girl knew her worth she knew she was badass and she knew she was lethal like i appreciate that in a character so i loved it the girl could teach me about fighting any day i would love it um and then the the other fantasy book i read was coincidentally the sequel to this one because it's a duology if you will and i really wanted to wrap up their whole story and that one was called the ashes and the star curse king i did not love that one as much i gave it a three out of five it wasn't my favorite you get to see more about it it felt like Oriah in that book was not really herself. She was dealing with a lot. I would tell you more, but I can't spoil you. And I just, I didn't love it as much. It wrapped up nicely. I'll say that for sure. And the author definitely took a lot of, you know, hard hitting battles and things like that. She wasn't afraid to take chances like deaths and stuff, if you get what I'm saying. But it just wasn't, it didn't get enough oomph from me. Now this series will be continuing, if I'm not mistaken, from different characters. I'm not quite sure if I'll read on because I love the characters in this book, Oriah and Rain. I hopefully I said his name right. Obsessed with them. Definitely gave me Farah and Resand vibes. So in case you wrote something similar to that, I checked this one out, just saying. But the second one, I didn't love as much. The first one, Chef's Kiss, five out of five. Yeah, my 10 books I read this month. There was a lot. I can only hope that August will go as gray and the rest of the months of the year. But as always, I say, oh. <laughs> we shall see if you've read any of these books i would love to know your thoughts and opinions on them and yeah let me know what you read in the month of july here's to hoping august will be another phenomenal reading month thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye